I'm taping this in my office before our Sunday. The sermon for this week is entitled God's Clock, and we're using scripture from Proverbs 13, verse 4, which says, The sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. I have to tell you, I've been thinking about time lately between this strange year and daylight savings. God has had me seeking his word on the word time. And while doing that, another word kept popping up in this quest of understanding time the way he would like me to. And, and that word is diligence. So I spoke about diligence a few weeks ago last week, and then here we are. We're talking about it again and I'm taking note of this. God is trying to convey a very special message to us here at Central with this word diligence. And if we recall, the word means careful and persistent effort. So if we look at our scripture from Proverbs today and we were to paraphrase it, it would sound something like this. The lazy desire the gains the diligent get but hate the pains the diligence take. Therefore, they have nothing. And this is especially true in regards to the soul. What today's uh, scripture is all about is really time. And diligence takes time. It takes time to earn a living. It takes time to trust God. It takes time to be satisfied. And the desires of the diligent, as our scripture said, will be fully satisfied. We Central Baptist will be fully satisfied. And what a promise that is from God. You see, God values time. And when we're young, we don't see the value of time. But as we get older, we start to realize just how valuable it is. And we also realize that there just doesn't seem to be enough of it. Time is a limited resource and a very precious one. Each day that I live, the less time I have, and that's true for all of us. And I don't mean that to be a depressing thought. It is the truth. If we embrace that knowledge as a powerful truth, then we can discover how valuable it is, and then we can be careful of the things that we let into our lives that use up this precious commodity of time. We need to run on God's clock, and we must remember that Satan will do everything in his power to steal from us with, or by doing things to get us off our God clock. And what type of things will he hinder us from or kind of put a roadblock in? Well, one could be failing to plan the day. That can definitely get us off our God clock. And it goes right along with the opposite and maybe planning too much or being too busy or putting things off. How about this, trying to do everything yourself? It's time to take back the basics because as someone said, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. And God has a plan for each of us. And he has a plan for this church. And here it is. Our plan must be using our time wisely so we can decipher his plan. And this takes time on our part and diligence. So how do you use your time? Who are you when it comes to time? A planner or a fly by the seat of your pants type person? I'm a planner to a fault sometimes. I make it a priority to plan the day or plan the week, yet God often takes those plans and he throws them out the window. You can ask Barb if that happens to us. It most definitely does. Planning is important to me. It's important because it allows me to prioritize, but before I plan, I pray. I don't like to have my day kind of flutter around on the wind and and kind of going on its own course that makes me very uncomfortable. Some people live their whole life like that and find that they have no direction. Someone once said to me that if I can't manage my time, then my time would manage me. 
And when I don't manage my time wisely, I get overworked, anxious, and tired. Those are my symptoms of being out of sync with God's clock. And managing my time means that I take time with God. So I obviously take time with my family and work too, but I must make time and take time with God. And when I give my day to him or keep in tune with the Holy Spirit and pray, my day goes by filled with his joy. And when I start to get frazzled or negative, anxious, angry, then I know I'm going off my time card and I need to clock back in. If we look to Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 and 16, we find some wonderful advice in this area. Paul wrote, Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Yes, we must make the best use of our time. These days are evil. It's easy to get lost in our day, to actually get lost in time. We rush here and there. We're not resting. We're not praying. We may get angry and frustrated, depressed or anxious, and that leaves us open to sin. Using our time wisely is not only a remedy against sin, it's a way to add care, compassion, and caution to our lives. Time is a talent and a gift given to us by God, and it's misspent or it's lost when we don't use it according to his will. And if we've lost our time, then we must be more diligent for the future. And here's what I mean if I'm saying lost time. For example, I, I miss my mother. My mom passed away in 2012, and I have wished so many times that I had more time with her in the, in the sense that she was still here. Yet I lost time with her when she was still alive. There were many times when I, I waited to call or I waited to visit, I was too busy. I lost that time. I lost those possible memories. I've often ignored the promptings of the Holy Spirit for my own schedule or my own plan. And we must learn to live each day in God's time. If you find you are negative, then you're not using your time wisely. For if we are doing God's will, there will be satisfaction. People are really quick to complain of bad times, and that would be fine. It would be all well and good if it stirred them into redeeming more time. But what are we complaining about? Many people on a dying bed would gladly redeem time at the price of everything, the whole world. How little do we think of it, and to what trivialities do we sacrifice it every day? Worrying, being angry and unforgiving, controlling, or just plain lazy. As I said earlier, there are many things that will steal your time and rob you of the focus you need to follow the Lord in the things that he has called you to do. Be aware. You are protecting a valuable treasure. Consider your life and your time a thing of great significance. God is working through both for his purposes. And when you question the value of your days because, well, maybe they all seem the same, remember that each morning is providing you with a clean slate of opportunity to do what counts. We tend to portion our time out bit by bit I know I need to hear this message today. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be telling you something that I need to be doing and that's setting aside at least an hour of personal time to replenish your body, your mind, and your soul. Let the Lord give you the discipline to break bad habits of neglect and develop new ones of healthy concern and responsibility. And don't be afraid. God's time and plan are so much better than anything we could ever imagine. I've used this scripture in the past, Jeremiah 29, 11, 
I love it. It provides all we need to trust that this is so. It reads, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for prosperity and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In the past, many times I thought I had a good plan. And then when things went south or went awry, well, it always ended up good in the end. God's plan was better. It just took me a little while to see it. We often, we don't know our own minds. We may have these moments of indecision or making bad decisions, but the Lord is never uncertain. And we sometimes fear that God's designs aren't good enough for us or that they're actually against us. But as his children, he only wants good. Even that which seems bad, he makes good. Paul wrote in Romans 8, 28, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Remember, we are the elect, and we must be diligent to confirm our calling. Take time to trust in God's promises. Good will come to those who love God and are called. Thankfully, God does not give us the expectations of our fears, and he doesn't give us the expectations of our fancies either. He, instead, gives us the expectations of our faith. He promises that trusting in him and in his time, it will be the best thing for us in the end. And I need that promise. I don't like to see people suffer from disease or illness. I don't like to see people suffer from violence or trauma or poverty or pain. But God doesn't either. Jesus ministered to and still ministers to those who suffer. And that is why I'm here. He he pulled me out of my time and he put me into his. Jesus said in John 12 verses 24 through 26, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. The one who loves his life loses it, and the one who hates his life in this world will keep it to eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Jesus spoke these words about our time. He uses the truly, truly formula, showing it's of great importance for his listeners to understand, for us to understand. He is relaying the principle that death is essential for further life in God's kingdom. Death to the wants of the world for eternal life with him. Death to our selfishness to live selfless with him. It takes time and work on our part, diligence, so that we may be satisfied. I feel, whew, I feel that time is of the essence here. I feel that God is saying, seek me before it's too late. Look around. We're losing time. We're getting older. What Christian legacy will we leave? I want people to know Jesus. Do we want to keep Central Baptist open? I do. I believe God does too. Yet we've failed. I've failed in many ways. We must not be stuck in our time. We must seek him in his way to bring new life to Westfield and our church, to our families and our friends. We mustn't be afraid to follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And don't think I'm blaming you. <laughs> I've missed moments of opportunity in my life, that's for sure. But I don't want to anymore. At least God has made me aware with this sermon study so that I can battle. I want to battle. I want to battle my selfishness and my pride. I want to battle the world. The devil is subtle, yet God is bold. Let us come boldly to him. 
Let us believe in the promise of being satisfied with our diligence. Let us seek the new changes, the new lives, the new fruit that he wants to provide. Let us welcome openness and change. Truly, truly, I say to you, God's plans are for our future and hope. We so easily pray for those who are sick and dying, yet each one of us is sick or dying in our own way. Is there a part of you that longs for a quiet time with the Lord? I know that in our busy days, this time we take to pray or read scripture, this oasis can seem like a luxury rather than a necessity. We quickly replace it with things that we think are more important. But it is really our primary way to nourish our soul and our relationship with God. It's a gift to you and to me. And sometimes it's hard to accept the gifts that we need the most. Simply offer him your time and yourself. He's the one, the one who will provide the quiet spirit. It can begin with something as easily as saying, good morning, Lord, the moment you wake, and good evening, Lord, at the end of each day. Beginning and ending with him as your first and last thought can help you mark your time. Better yet, it will help you reset your time to God's clock. We, as his children and his body, must use our time wisely, for the days are evil. Are you wondering what God can do for you? Are you hoping to change how you use your time? The light of the world provides our true daylight saving. But only if you let him, Jesus, be the master of your time. Let us pray. Father, we come to you with repentance in our hearts for not always using our time wisely. We long to be satisfied, satisfied with the peace and the love and the grace and the joy that we can get when we are connected to you in relationship with you. Help quiet our time, quiet our souls, so that we can be nourished in your word in prayer so that we too can be satisfied. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May your time be blessed this week and forever.